happy Wednesday, eighth grade. So today we are doing lesson 104, which is on abstract rational equations. These equations are just a little bit different just because there's quite a few variables. There's not a whole lot of constants in them and you are solving for one of the variables. So it kind of can get a little bit confusing. Don't let it intimidate you. Just remember your rules of isolating a variable. So remember, always do the opposite of what's being done to get it by itself. Okay, so for this first equation, this first example, it says find m, but then it gives us fractions. So it's got 1 over x plus b over m equals c. Okay, so we are trying to get this m by itself. Hmm. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to try and eliminate the denominators. We did that yesterday. We're going to work on that a little bit more. So we're going to have to eliminate the denominators. This is the first step in getting the m by itself. Okay. So our common denominator between x and m would be xm, right? So I'm going to multiply all of these fractions by an x and an m. You can put xm over one if it helps you to remember that it's technically a fraction. Okay. So we've got xm over 1 times 1 over x, xm over 1 times b over m, and c times xm over 1. So I'm just multiplying all of these by what would be the common denominator, okay? Now I can cross simplify. So I've got an x on the bottom and an x on the top here. So I can mark these out. Keep in mind that x and m are not equal to zeros. It tells you that it's not equal to zeros. It tells you that the very beginning. So I know that none of these are zeros. So, okay, so now let's multiply. So m times one, which would just be m, okay? The next one we have xm and we have an m as the denominator. So this time the m is gonna cancel out and I'm left with xb, okay? Or you could have bx, it doesn't matter. Okay, and then this last one we have, we can put the c over one and there's nothing in common for the denominator, so we would just be multiplying, so cxm or cmx, whatever. Okay, so now I'm left with m plus xb equals cxm. Okay, so can't really isolate the m when there's an m on both sides of the equation. So I first want to move this m over because I want to get my m's on the same side of the equation now. So it is a positive m, so we are gonna subtract m from both sides. So m minus m, these two are gonna cancel out. What I do to one side of the equation, I must do to the other. So cx minus, I mean, cxm minus m will be on this side of the equation now. Okay, keep in mind this cxm was already there. I moved this m to this side of the equation, so it made it a negative. So now I've got xb equals cxm minus m. Okay, so I've got M and an M. Okay, so I want to take out what is in common. So the common factor between CXM and M is, is just this M, and that's what we're trying to isolate. So we're going to take out the M from both. So this side is going to stay the same. I'm going to still have XB over here. So I'm just going to move that XB down. Okay, I'm going to take out an M from both of these. So I'm going to divide both by an m. Remember when we are dividing by a common factor, we just take it out and then we divide everything else by that variable. So we've got an m that we took out and then in parentheses we have cx and then m divided by m is going to give us a 1. So this is going to be a negative 1. Okay, now I have the m taken out and I can move that cx minus one to the other side of the equation. So these are being multiplied here right now. The opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm gonna divide this by both sides of the equation. So I'm gonna divide up by cx minus one over here and cx minus one over here. When I do this over here, these two are gonna cancel out and I'm just left with this m over here. This, I can't really simplify this fraction so this is going to remain the same. So our answer here is xb over cx minus 1 is equal to m. Whoa, I know. That's a lot of steps. 
it can get very confusing, but slow down, make sure you show all of your work, okay? That way, if you send it to me, that way, if you if you couldn't figure something out, if you went wrong somewhere, I know exactly where you went wrong. So make sure that you're showing all of your work. Okay, let's look at one more example of this. This time it says to find B. So again, B is in a denominator. So it is part of a fraction. We're gonna do the same steps that we did earlier. It tells us right off the bat that D and B are not equal to zero. Okay, so I am going to first find a common denominator or a common denominator here would be BD. So I'm gonna multiply all of these fractions by BD. Don't let this confuse you because I just went ahead and wrote it out, but we're gonna walk through it all together. So I'm gonna multiply each fraction by BD. When I do that here, AB, A over B times ED, the B's are gonna cancel out and I'm left with a numerator of D and a numerator of A. So A times D is gonna be AD. Okay, let's look at the next one. We have BD over one times C over D. These D's are gonna cancel out and I'm left with B times C, which is BC. Okay, good. All right, this last one over here, I'm gonna put X over one. They don't have, there's nothing I can cross simplify there. So I'm gonna end up with BDX. Okay, good. Okay. Now I wanna start isolating my variable. So we are solving for B here. So I wanna get B by itself. So we have AD plus BC equals BDX. I have a B on this side and a B on this side. So I want to get the Bs together. They need to be on the same side of the equation so I can move forward. So I'm gonna subtract BC from this side because it's being added over here and we always wanna do the opposite in order to move it over. So minus BC here, and I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side of the equation. So I'm gonna subtract BC from this side as well. Okay, when we do that here, these two cancel out and I'm left with AD um, equals BDX minus that BC, okay? So now I've got a B and a B here. So I want to get, I need to take out the common factor so that way I can get B by itself. So I'm gonna divide both of these by a B. So this AD is gonna stay the same for right now. I'm not doing anything with it yet. Over here, I'm taking out a B. So when I divide B DX by B, I'm left with just DX. When I divide BC by B, I'm left with just that negative C, okay? So now I want to, now that I have the B isolated, I wanna get it completely isolated. I wanna move this over here, okay? So when the opposite of what's happening here, this is being multiplied, this B is being multiplied by this term. So I wanna do the opposite, which would be division. So I'm gonna divide this by both sides, okay? So when I divide dx minus c by this side of the equation, these two are gonna cancel out. And then when I divide it by this side, it, it's gonna stay a fraction. I can't really simplify that any further. So my answer here is ad over D, dx minus c is equal to b. I know these can be confusing, confusing. Please, please, please call me if you um, need me to walk through some of these with you. I really don't mind. I would actually love that. And I would like for you to do today pages 441 and 442. You're going to do 7 through 18. It's a little bit of everything that we've been doing recently. When you finish, snap a picture and send it over to me so that way I know that you are on the right track. If you don't understand one, snap a picture of it, send it to me, put a question mark, say, how do I do this? I don't mind helping you. I actually expect to hear from you. So when you finish, just send a picture over to me and you guys are doing a great job. Have a good day. Bye.